This video is going to be about suspension setup and specifically about springs at anti-roll bars. And I know it's a bit of a different video but while work on the 55 was still ongoing I decided to upload this for now. Because I do see a bit of confusion on the topic so I decided to upload this video to hopefully explain some of the things um, behind why di changing different springs and anti-roll bar settings do result in better lap times. I also wanted to cover dampers but the video was getting too long so I'll leave that for a different video. So I'm going to start off with the basics and then later get on to how changing different settings um, help you change the balance of your car and help you get better lap times. So before I get into anything else, I just want to explain a bit about why your car does need a suspension uh, for the track. And I'm going to demonstrate that by using these two models. And the main difference between these two is that the XJ220 actually has a suspension, whereas the Ferrari Enzo has no suspension at all. So it's just like a go-kart. Uh, so just to demonstrate what would happen on a car if it had no suspension and it goes over a bump. Um, let's just say this is a bump and the Ferrari Enzo goes over this. Uh, now, if you can tell, this tire has lifted completely off the ground. And now if you can tell, these two tires are completely unloaded and all the weight of the car has basically gone into the, onto these two tires. This front tire and this rear tire. Um, so let's just see what would happen if the XJ220 goes over the same bump. The car that does have the suspension. And now as you can tell, all, all four wheels are still on the ground. And the only difference is that this wheel has gone slightly higher, the wheel that's over the bump. And obviously this will have more load on it because the spring has taken the weight. Whenever you compress the spring, it also puts more load on the tire. But still, all, all four tires are on the ground and all four tires would have some weight on it. So the weight is more or less more evenly distributed over all four tires in this case. And the softer your suspension would be, uh, the more it would basically, the, the more the weight would evenly be distributed on all four tires. And the stiffer you make your spring rates, it will go somewhere closer to the end zone. So now just to explain why you would want to load on all four tires to be distributed equally. Well, the first reason is if you load one diagonal of your car more than the other, like in the case of the Enzo, that would change the balance of the car, oversteer versus understeer. So that would make your car really twitchy going over bumps. And I'll later explain in the video why it changes the balance. Um, but the other reason is that um, keeping the load on all four tires even is the way to get the most possible grip out of your tires. And the reason is the load line of the tire. Uh, so if you were to plot a graph of grip versus load of your tire, it would look something like this. So load is basically the weight of the car pushing down on the tire and the grip is how much grip the tire has. So the thing you notice about this graph is that it does not really go up linearly, it goes up and then it starts to drop off after a certain point. And this is the main reason behind why heavier cars do not handle as well as lighter cars. Because in the case of heavier cars, um, if you increase the weight of the car, the inertia goes up linearly with weight. But you can see that the grip does not exactly go up linearly as you increase the weight of the car. Um, so the car will have more inertia trying to stop it from changing direction as compared to grip. So that's why it would not be able to change direction as well as a lighter car. And the other thing this tells you is that a car with a lower center of gravity would handle better than a car with a higher center of gravity. So let's just take this example of a car over here, which is taking a corner and it tips more weight to the outside tires. So let's say this red dot represents the point where all four tires were when the car was standing stationary. But since now the car is taking a corner, the outside tires would have more load and the inside tires would have less load. So now they would be at two different points on the graph. Uh, so if you are to take the average of these two points, you would see that the average does not um, give you as much grip as what all four tires were at when they were at the same grip level. And you can probably see that the farther apart you move these two points, the grip will only become less and less. And if you bring these points closer together, um, the grip will become more. So that basically tells you that um, if you lower the center of gravity of the car, the car will tip less weight to the outside tire and that would basically give you more grip. Um, but if you move the points further apart, it will give you less grip. So that basically tells you why a car with a lower center of gravity would grip better. And it also tells you that a car that keeps its load even on all four tires would grip better than a car with uneven loads on all four tires. So now talking about how all this relates to the spring rates, um, first of all I'm just going to start off by explaining what spring rates are. Um, it's basically the measure of stiffness of your spring. Uh, so they're usually measured in kilograms per millimeter and what that really means is that one kilogram per millimeter would mean that you would need to put a weight of one kilogram on your spring to compress it one millimeter. Uh, so basically a higher number would mean a stiffer spring. But the thing is that spring rates aren't exactly the same thing as wheel spring rates um, because the spring rate at your actual wheel is a little different and that's really the spring rate that matters because that determines how forces on your wheel would actually make it move up and down. 
So if you have a spring that's connected halfway across your lower control arm, that really means that your real spring rate is half as much as your actual spring rate. And if you know the distance of how far along your spring is on your lower control arm, you can actually um, calculate your real spring rate, or approximate it, because other suspension geometry would also affect this. So now just to give you an example of how different spring rates would affect your car, I'm just going to use this example over here. So let's just say we have these two cars over here, car 1 and car 2. And the only difference between them is the ground clearance. So let's just say car 1 has twice the amount of ground clearance as car 2. Uh, so what that means is that if both these cars go in a braking zone and they both hit the brakes really hard, car 1 can pitch forwards twice as much before the suspension bottoms out as compared to car 2. Uh, so that means car 1 can get away with using really soft springs and car 2 will need stiffer springs. If the ground clearance, generally if you reduce the ground clearance by half, you should be stiffening your spring rates by twice as much to decrease that um, pitch, uh, pitching and rolling by twice as much. So now I guess you probably see the problem over here. It's that if, if you want to run your springs as soft as possible, you would need to run a higher ride height, meaning um, more, meaning the center of gravity would be higher and that obviously means less cornering speeds but if you want to run your car as low as possible that means you would also have to go with stiffer springs to prevent your car from bottoming out so really the question is which one's better running your car on soft springs and higher from the ground or running your car with stiff springs and really close to the ground and to be honest it really depends on the track so if you're on a track that's really smooth and really leveled you can get away with running your car really low with really stiff springs which would give you the advantage of running a lower center of gravity, which would give you faster cornering speeds. Um, but realistically speaking, um, that doesn't really happen because looking at this video from uh, the E55 with the pushrod suspension, you can even see that um, while going on a seemingly level surface, the suspension is still doing so much work, so the surface is never perfectly leveled. Um, there are always bumps and there are always curves you need to go over in every corner. Um, so. So depending on how bumpy the track is, you would need to run your suspension a little, a little softer and due to that also run your car a little higher. Um, so it really depends on the track you're at. Uh, for every track you would require a different spring rate depending on how bumpy the track is. The smoother the track is you can go with a stiffer suspension but the bumpier the track is you would need to soften the suspension to give you more stability over the uneven surfaces because a stiff suspension would get really twitchy over uneven surfaces uh, so that's really the main difference there is more to spring rates than just that um, like in terms of in terms of how they also affect oversteer versus understeer but I'm going to talk about that later when I talk about anti-roll bars and also in terms of um, cars that have ground effect cars that have downforce and ground effect they also need to set the springs accordingly because um, they need to keep the floor of the car levels from the ground um, but I'm not going to cover that because that's a whole different topic and um, it's going to make this video really long. Uh, so now talking about how um, spring rates relate to how you, sh you should set up your um, coilovers. Uh, so the lower setting on your coilovers is basically to adjust the overall length of your coilover. So what you would need to adjust that for is to adjust the bottom out because there's a rubber at the top of the suspension and um, really your suspension should bottom out before your car hits the floor. Um, so this is something that you would initially only be adjusting once when you install your coilover. So basically your suspension bottoms out before your car's bodywork hits the floor. Um, the, the, the setting on the top right underneath the spring, that's for spring preload. And this is what you should be using to change your ride height and also your corner balance. Corner balance again is something I'm going to talk about later. And the other setting uh, for spring rate is most coilovers won't come with adjustable spring rate. So what you can do is you can add coiled spring rubbers between the um, coils of your coil spring and what that would basically do is eliminate one of the coils from compressing and it basically gives you a stiffer spring rate but you can only use that till a certain point because if you add too many spring rubbers you are reducing the total amount of travel of your spring um, so after a certain point your coils will just start hitting each other if you keep adding coil spring rubbers but it's a pretty good way to adjust your um, spring rates but you can only do it to a certain extent after that you will need to go with stiffer springs entirely there are coilovers out there that come with adjustable spring rates but those are really expensive so it's not really a cheap option and they don't make it for every car so that might not be an option for everyone so now getting to the topic of anti-roll bars an anti-roll bar is basically a bar that links one side of your suspension to the other and um, basically when both sides of your suspension move up and down together this bar does nothing at all it will just move up and down along with the suspension but when one side of your suspension tries to go up and the other side tries to go down, this bar will be twisted. 
And this bar has a certain spring rate to it, which is why we'll try to resist that twisting force. And it will basically, uh, in turn, try to um, prevent the car, prevent one side of the suspension from going up and the other side from going down. You can think of it as an additional spring that only comes in to play when the car tries to roll, but it has no effect on the pitching motion of the car. And the reason why cars need anti-roll bars rather than, let's say, anti-pitch bars is because if you look at the wheelbase of normal cars, they have a much longer wheelbase compared to the track. Um, what that means is that cars throw much more weight side to side in a corner um, as they do front to back or back to front in a braking zone or during acceleration. Uh, so the roll is a much bigger factor in a car as compared to um, pitching forwards under braking, let's just say. Uh, so that's why they need that extra bit of spring rate to prevent them from rolling. If a car had no uh, anti-roll bars at all, um, it would roll way more than it would pitch, which, meaning that you would need to go with much stiffer springs um, to prevent that roll. And another really important thing about anti-roll bars in racing is that they can be used to change the balance of your car, oversteer versus understeer. Uh, and I'm just going to briefly explain what oversteer and understeer is. So understeer is when uh, the grip on your front tires is much less than the grip amount of grip on your rear tires. So what would happen in this case is that you would try to turn and um, your front tires would start slipping way before your rear tires. So you would be wasting all that extra grip you have at the rear. In the case of oversteer, you would have a lot more grip on the front tires but a lot less grip on the rear tires. So basically every time you will try to turn too hard, your rear will try to step out and the car will try to spin out. And because of that, you will be limited to how, how uh, fast you can turn. A neutral balance, which means that the grip on your front tires and the grip on your rear tires is pretty much exactly the same. This is the balance that will give you the fastest speed through the corners because in this um, balance, you're basically using all four wheels to their uh, maximum potential to turn the car. So now to explain how anti-roll bars can be used to change the balance of your car. Uh, this is a bit of a difficult thing to explain, but I'll try my best to explain it using this example. Uh, so let's just say you have this car over here that weighs 2000 kilograms. And let's also say that this car has a 50-50 weight distribution. So that would mean that it has the same weight over all four tires, so 500 kilograms. And this car has two anti-roll bars, front, uh, one anti-roll bar at the front and one at the anti-roll bar at the rear. And they are both of equal stiffness and the springs are also of equal stiffness. Um, so let's just say when this car goes through a corner, it tips more weight to the outside tires. So now the outside tires, rather than being at 500, they go to 750 kilograms. And the inside tires from 500, they go to 250 kilograms. So basically more of the weight has gone to the outside tires because the car is taking a corner. Uh, now here's the tricky part. Now let's just say at this point, we were to take out the anti-roll bar from the rear and mount an additional anti-roll bar at the front. So now we have two anti-roll bars at the front, but no anti-roll bar at the rear. Um, now if you were to do this on the car, um, realistically it wouldn't change the body roll of the car at all, because the overall anti-roll bar stiffness is still the same. All you've done is you've taken out the anti-roll bar from the back and you've put it in the front. So the car will still roll by the same amount. And the thing about anti-roll bars is when you twist an anti-roll bar, uh, the anti-roll bar applies more force on the, um, on the wheel just because it's twisted. Whenever you twist the metal bar, it will try to come back to its original shape, which is why it exerts a force on that wheel. So let's just say in this case, for this anti-roll bar, that force is 150 kilograms. So going back to the example, if you were to add two anti-roll bars at the front and take out an anti-roll bar from the rear, so now you know that the car did roll by the same amount, and but it has an additional anti-roll bar over here. So you know that it exerted an additional 150 kilograms on this tire, the front outside tire. So that's why we add 150 to this and it must have taken 150 out of this tire because that's the other tire it's connected to. So we subtract 150 from this. So you're left with the loads 900 and 100. But at the rear, now you know that that additional anti-roll bar that was there adding weight to this tire is now gone. So you'll subtract 150 from this and you'll add 150 to this side. So if you look at what you've done to the car overall, you've moved a lot of weight to the front outside tire and taken out a lot of weight from the front inside tire but you've balanced out the rear more or less so now the loads on the rear are more balanced but the loads on the front are way more unbalanced because the front is doing all the work of preventing the car from rolling if you remember back from the load line of the tires tires perform their best when they're mo closer to an even load on uh, like both the inside and the outside tire um, if, if they're at a greater difference if the difference between like the front outside tire and the front inside tire is way different in terms of load, obviously the car won't grip as well. So what you've done in this case is you've added grip to the rear 
but you've taken out grip from the front. So if the car had a neutral balance before, now the car would understeer because you've added grip to the rear and you've removed grip from the front. Um, so yeah, that's just to explain why anti-roll bars work the way they do. And um, yeah, that's the reasoning behind why they help change the balance of the car. So just to quickly sum up what changes you should be making to correct understeer or oversteer. So if your car has understeer, you should be going softer at the front, either by spring rates or by anti-roll bars. And really they both will do the same thing. But the only thing with springs you have to keep in mind is that if you soften the springs, you will also affect the pitching motion of your car. So your car will pitch more while going on the brakes. Whereas anti-roll bar settings won't affect pitch at all, they would only affect the car in the corners. So that's why anti-roll bars are definitely the better thing to change while you're trying to fix understeer or oversteer. Um, and for oversteer, it's the opposite. You try to soften the rear. Um, so softer with the rear springs and the rear anti-roll bars. Now one drawback I should mention with these um, spring rate and anti-roll bar settings is that if you push too extreme with these settings, you can reach a point where one of your wheels reaches completely zero loads, um, where in the case of um, some front heavy cars, you might have seen the three wheel through the corners, like they lift one rear wheel completely off the ground. Um, you might have seen that with Civics or other front heavy cars that go really stiff with the rear suspension. Uh, so the problem with that is that if you're reaching close to zero loads or completely zero loads on one of your tires, you would be able to lock that tire up really easily under braking and you would be able to spin that tire really easily under acceleration. Um, so really these settings should be left to the really end just to fine tune the balance of your car. Um, if your car has understeer, the first thing you should be doing is going with wider front tires and if the car has oversteer, going with wider tires at the back and leaving these settings at the very end just to fine tune the balance of your car. So you should never have anti-roll bars at the front that are way stiffer than your anti-roll bar at the rear and things like that because they will basically um, unbalance the loads on your tires to the point where you can be um, locking up one of the tires really easily or spinning up one of the tires really easily. Um, so that's the only drawback. So the last thing I want to talk about is corner balance and this really refers to basically balancing the diagonal um, corners of your car so they are at a more even a load. So let's just say in this case this car is standing here, it has a 50-50 weight distribution and it has 500 kilograms on all wheels. So right now it has a perfect corner balance. But let's just say you were to increase the preload on the front, um, front right tire and by increasing the front preload you've added an extra 100 kilograms on that tire. But the thing is when you do that you don't only change the load on one tire. What this will do is it will also shift more weight to the diagonal uh, corner of the car which is the rear left side tire. And it will also put a tip 100 kilograms on that tire. And what this will do is since now two of your tires have taken more of the weight of the car, the other two tires will um, take less of the weight of the car. So they will move down to 400 kilograms. Um, and the reason why this would be undesirable is that um, let's say if you had this on a real car and you were to go through a right hand corner. When you'll go through the right hand corner, you already have a front right tire that's preloaded. So when it will tip weight to the outside and also the rear will tip more weight to the outside you will automatically have a front end that's more even in terms of loads than the rear end so the car will oversteer in a right hander and it will understeer through a left hander um, that's why it's undesirable to have unbalanced corners in a car um, because it will have different handling characteristics to let's say a left hander and a right hander so just as an additional fact i decided to put this camera in the wheel well of a cl55 now this car has a hydraulic suspension, it's called active body control and what it basically does is it cancels all the body roll and all the pitching movements of the car by changing hydraulic pressure at each wheel. Um, so basically this car can get away with not having any anti-roll bars at all, so it doesn't need anti-roll bars and it has really soft springs and it, it still has no body roll at all. If you see, like in this video I was weaving the car pretty hard and you can still see that how little the wheel is moving up and down. Comparing that to the video of my Mercedes SL um, which has which has anti-roll bars, but it has a conventional suspension. Look how much the wheels move up and down when I weave the car. Uh, so really, that is the best suspension you can go with, the hydraulic suspension, because you can get away with having really soft springs while still having no body roll and no pitching motion at all. So you can get away with having soft springs and running your car really low. Um, but I guess we just have to wait till the point where the aftermarket companies start making these suspensions for racing. So that's it for this video. Hopefully the 55 videos should be coming out soon. I'm just waiting on a few parts. Um, but let me know if you found this video helpful. And um, thank you for watching.